Hi, everybody. We're going to start in just a minute. We're going to give it a couple minutes for maybe not a couple minutes, but a couple seconds for a few more people to climb on board here. Uh, it is just notifying all the people on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, it's, uh, Twitter, etc. And so just hang with me for just a second. And I'll explain what this is going to be all about in terms of understanding the mind of an art buyer today. So hang with me just another couple of seconds, if you don't mind. Thank you. Almost ready. Go ahead and make your comments. We're going to be giving away prizes for comments today. All right, a lot of people on board already. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, we're going to get started here. Um, hello from Southeast Georgia, says Beth. From Ashburn, Virginia, says Jay. Uh, let's see, Seattle. That one skipped away. I lost it. Uh, Philadelphia, Tennessee, hot Tennessee, Santa Barbara, Syracuse, New York, Michigan. Wow. South Carolina, a lot of people from all over Minneapolis, Maryland. Thank you so much for tuning in. Okay. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur Magazine, Plein Air Magazine. And we are here today to talk about the mind of the art buyer. But first, a couple of announcements. We are doing this, of course, every single day. I repeat myself a lot because, quite frankly, every day I learn about something, uh, somebody new who is just tuning in for the first time, who is just discovering this. For those of you who have heard this before, I get it. Uh, for those of you who are new, just know that uh, we have been here now 102 days in a row. 102 days in a row, live every day at 12 noon. And the goal is to uplift your spirits, make you think about some other things, get your head out of the virus and all the other stuff that's going on, and help keep your, uh, your body and your immune system in good shape by keeping your mind in good shape. And so that's why I'm here. That's why I try to do this for you every day. We will keep going as long as, uh, well, uh, hopefully... Uh, the virus is over, but hopefully the virus will be over before long. You know, I could use a day off. It's 102 days. Okay, so uh, today we're going to talk about inside the mind of the art buyer. I've got some prizes and some things I want to go through with you today. Uh, I will tell you that every day at 3 p.m., we're offering you a new free video sample. These are uh, videos that we have produced or our company has produced. And they are things that this, this week, uh, or today anyway, we're focusing on a classic, one of our older ones, an oldie but goodie, but still very valid information and very high quality. As a matter of fact, today at three o'clock, we're going to give you uh, Jeff Legg, and this is a product called Green Bottle with Apricots. And he is probably the best still life guy on the face of the earth, if not the best, certainly one of the best and does incredible work. He's also something that he never never talks about. He's also a fabulous portrait and figure painter, but he really focuses attention on still life. And so uh, this is a video that you're gonna wanna see. It's three o'clock today, and that will be at Streamline Art Video. That's where you find these things, Streamline Art Video. And uh, that'll be just popping up. So if you go to YouTube and subscribe or Facebook, uh, and find Streamline Art video, you will automatically get it. It is not here on my channel, all right? So that's what's going on today. We also are giving away some prizes today. Uh, today, let's see here. We gave away, I've got prizes. I just got to find them here. Okay, so today uh, we're giving away uh, a pair of, of value specs. The winner is Dennis Marshall in New Jersey. Thumbs up for Dennis. Thank you so much. I'm still getting used to my technology. We also have a Plen Air Magazine apron. The apron is going to Pamela Kay in Washington. All right, Pamela, thank you for participating. The way to win, folks, is to make sure that you leave comments if you're from outside the country. Tell us where you are, but it's nice to know where you are, no matter where you are and who you are. 
I want to remind you guys that I've got a blog. It's called Sunday Coffee. It comes out every Sunday morning, of course. And it's really more about philosophy on life and thoughts. And it might be something you will find valuable. What people oftentimes say is, I felt like you were speaking to me today. And so maybe that's helpful. Go to sundaycoffee.com, read a couple of them. If you like it, sign up. Okay. All right. So um, today, inside the art, mind of the art buyer, uh, I want to tell you a couple of things real quickly. We have a, uh, a, an event called Plen Air Live. Plen Air Live uh, was designed, originally designed for those of you who felt like you needed to get out and and communicate with and be a part of your plein air family to get to know other painters, to paint with other painters, and to learn and grow from some of the best painters in the world. We designed it for the people who were not going to the plein air convention, the people who felt like uh, they didn't want to leave, travel, get on an airplane, put themselves at risk in any way. So we designed that for those folks. And then we also designed it for people who have never been to a plein air convention before. Now, plein air live is not the plein air convention. There's a big difference, but there are lots of similarities, especially the stage teaching. So we have some terrific artists, and I'll go through these artists for you so that you can see it. Uh, I'm not going to mention all the names, but there are some really big, big, important rock star artists that are going to be on teaching for you. We have a beginner's day, which is optional for everybody who wants to learn about plein air painting. We will be going through how to paint uh, various things. Now, I saw Barbara Tapp yesterday, who's a really well-known watercolor artist. She decided to attend the beginner's day because we're going to teach the basics of oil painting, acrylic painting, watercolor painting, pastel painting, and gouache painting. That way you can learn uh, really at a very simple level. We try to make sure that we bring it to a low level so that you know those of you who are trying to figure this out can, can do that. And so this is the beginner's day. That's optional. That's a hundred bucks basically, 97 bucks to get into that. You don't have to attend Plan Air Live to get into that. It's a good starter for anybody who wants to learn about Plan Air. And then we have other categories. So we have four days in a row of some of these people that I just highlighted, actually all the people that I've highlighted. And so you'll have an opportunity to watch them live. And it starts basically at uh, 11.30, uh, uh, 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 uh, Central. I'm on Central time part of the time. So I will do my daily at 12 noon on that day and finish up early, then go right to Plein Air Live, four days in a row, July, 15, 16, 17, and 18, two weekdays or three weekdays, one week end day. Uh, and so if you cannot get off work, uh, you can uh, buy the package that gets you a replay. Every package has a replay. Some have longer replays and some have lots of stuff, lots of cool stuff. Let me go through that with you for just a second and, and show you uh, if I can, I'll see if I can, I can uh, show you what I've got. Well, I don't know where it is. Hang on a second. I guess, uh, I, I guess I'm not going to show you. Anyway, I was going to talk to you about the different packages, but there are different levels that have lots of cool stuff. All right. So the last thing I want to remind you of, and this is a very important thing. If you've been on the fence about going, uh, we know that there's basically one week left. This begins in about a week. So one week from the beginning of Plen Air Live, uh, we are increasing the price by $100. And that starts tomorrow at essentially midnight, uh, 11.59 tomorrow Pacific time. That's when you need to register by to get that extra $100 off. The price increases tomorrow. And we have had a massive volume of people who have, have, uh, uh, have signed up. And I will tell you that if you signed up and you did not get something from us in the mail, we email you as soon as you sign up. So if you did not get a confirmation, please know that sometimes it ends up in other places. So I found some stuff that I was looking for yesterday in what Google calls the promotions folder. It depends on your, your provider. Sometimes things end up in a spam folder. And so look around for it if you don't hear from it contact us and, uh, and make sure that you let us know and we will make sure that you get your confirmation because we want to make sure you're there. 
A, a virtual conference is so easy. It's easy to attend because essentially all you have to do is uh, click on the link and then you'll be in. The virtual conference is watching, it's participating. You can ask questions, so you can make comments just like you're, you're making now. And you can also do a lot of other things such as uh, go on live with us uh, and we have break rooms. You can go into the break rooms and meet other artists. Uh, when we have painting together at night uh, in the evening, you'll be able to do that. And so there's a lot of, a lot of different things you can do. And so um, I seem to have lost control here of my Mac. My mouse has frozen up and I can't click on any of this stuff. <laughs> so this could be a problem today. And uh, so I'm not sure how I'm going to correct that, but I may have to, uh, may have to punt here for a minute. This is called pivoting. Uh, look for a way to pivot. Let's see if I can figure out what's going on here. Okay. So I'm going to try and get to my slides and I'm going to ask you to bear with me because I'm going to have to get my laptop to get to my slides. Hang on. Okay, so I'm going to talk about inside the, the mind of an art buyer, and um, we'll see if we can make this work, uh, hopefully, because I had my mouse freeze up. So one of the things that it's very important in all marketing, as you know, I teach marketing to artists. I'm trying to always give you tips and ideas, uh, 102 days in a row of this. And it's always important in all marketing to understand your customer, know who your customer is, know how they think, know what they're thinking about, because if you can do that, you can make a huge difference in, uh, in, re in, in their response. So, all right. So the, the first thing I want to say is that all decisions that all people make in all cases are emotional. Now you might say, well, how could buying a bottle of Clorox be emotional? The emotion is the brand. So a product has, uh, you have a perception in your head that a brand is better than another brand. Uh, that's a little bit logical, but it's also emotional. You might, uh, you might like that brand for unknown reasons, but it might be the smell of clean or the smell of lemon. Those are emotional decisions. So when we're talking about people who buy art, please know that buying art is an emotional decision. All buying decisions are emotional, but they're rationalized by logic. Most people will rationalize anything. So why does somebody need a Mercedes Benz or a Lexus instead of a, uh, a lesser expensive car? And those are emotional decisions. Now they will tell themselves well, it's a better car. It's German made. It's, it's, uh, it's a, uh, it's got, you know, beautiful leather. It's got all these gadgets. Those are rationalizing with logic, but they are emotional decisions because the reality is that emotion is what's driving that purchase. We'll get into that in a minute. You'll see this. Rarely does somebody ever set out to buy a piece of art. Now, there are occasions you know, if somebody is going to the Coeur d'Alene art auction or they're going to a, uh, the Sotheby's or Christie's, they're there because they have seen something that they want to buy and they are a collector. Uh, the, there are a lot of collectors in the world, but the majority of art does not sell to collectors. The majority of art sells to everybody else. So there are people who set out, but most people oftentimes don't set out, you know, like I'll, I'll I'll see somebody wander into an art gallery and what do they say? Someone walks up and says, can I help you? And they'll say, just looking, right? They don't necessarily set out to buy something. They're just kind of looking around. But if something appeals to them, then all of a sudden they can become a buyer. So unlike products, art is very personal. And what I mean by that is that all products have an emotional appeal but art has a very personal appeal. In other words, 
Uh, Mercedes is a wide brand. It appeals to a lot of people who want that high quality car, that status car. Uh, it's a wide, but, uh, if you were to paint a, a landscape on the side of the door of that car, heaven forbid, uh, you, you would say, well, I don't want that car. Uh, you might like the one that has the painting of a giraffe on it or something. So, uh, art's a very personalized thing. And so to some extent, this idea of knowing your customer has to be, um, uh, has to be couched with the idea that art's very personal. It only takes one person to buy a piece of art. You don't need a lot of people to buy it. You just need the one person who it resonates with. And so you, you have to keep that in mind. And so in, no matter how much marketing you do, ultimately it's going to come down to, does it resonate? Now you can help them make the decision to buy their, uh, something that they've, they've had appeal to them. If you hang with me for a second. Art is usually, not always, but usually an impulse buy, meaning they didn't intend, they, they see something, they absolutely have to have it. Raise your hand, make a comment if you've ever bought something that's an impulse buy. Now, I have a, a real big addiction problem. I will walk into an art gallery to sell them some advertising, and I will walk out having purchased a painting. And my dad has a saying, he said, somebody's always selling. It's either you're selling them or they're selling you. Well, in those particular cases, they sold me. The art sold itself. They maybe helped nudge me into it. But I remember I walked into this one gallery and I saw this unbelievably stunning still life. It was very, very um, quiet and it didn't really stand out a lot. And, and uh, it was kind of hanging in a place where they weren't giving it a lot of attention. and. I just had to buy that still life. I just had to do it. So I worked out something to do that. And uh, it was completely an impulse thing. And, and that's, uh, that's a problem for me. So I have to be really careful. I have to tell myself sometimes when I'm going in on business, I am absolutely not going to buy anything now. But the problem is we all tell ourselves that, but then we find something we want. We oftentimes buy it. Now, art is pure emotion. Some products have a little bit of logic to it. And we might justify an art purchase with a little bit of logic, like it matches the couch. We need to decorate the new condo uh, anyway. We need some art. Uh, we need to decorate the office. You know, So there's some logic that can go into it. But when you see something you want, it's pure emotion. Art creates a feeling. Feeling is an emotion word, right? Um, I've told the story about a piece of art that hangs in my sister-in-law's house. And she says, everybody who comes in sees that painting and they make a comment on it. And that, that, uh, that is a feeling that they're remembering. Uh, art creates a memory. Uh, most people were like, oh, I know that place. I love that place. And they're, they're never right about the, what, what the place is. And art represents, sometimes it represents a belief, you know, like, if somebody is into something, I, I've got uh, a friend who paints uh, oil rigs, uh, historic oil rig paintings, and guess who buys them? People who do oil, uh, people who, who uh, mine, what are the, what's the word? Drill for oil. And these people have them hanging up in their offices, and it's about something that represents a belief about who they are or what they believe in or what they're into. You know, there are people who buy car paintings of classic cars. A buddy of mine, Jackson, told me the other day, if I ever took up painting, I would paint classic cars because that's what he really loves. And so that when you have something like that, it's promoting a feeling, a memory. You know, why is it that nostalgia plays a certain role? One thing I love up here at the lake is we have surrounded ourselves with all this stuff from childhood. You know, I, when my mom passed away, I... I got a bunch of stuff that, that was hers that I grew up with. And when I see that stuff every day, it makes me feel better. So art is about feeling and memory and belief and oftentimes about something that people do. It's also really important in general when you're marketing anything to understand what human emotions are, because the more you can understand those emotions, the more you can tap into those emotions. Now, I do not ever want to say that Marketing should be manipulative 
First off, no one will buy something that they don't want to buy, period. Nobody's getting forced into it. There's nobody twisting any arms. Manipulation is not a good thing. Stimulation, if somebody, let's say somebody is like on the fence and you can help them get off the fence, they're going to buy it. They're going to feel happy about it. They're going to be, you're going to make them happier by having your art in their house. So we're, we're okay to stimulate some emotions or to bring up some emotions and, and certainly understanding it will help you because if you understand it, you can put it into things like your marketing. Now, one thing I want to ask you is, have you ever interviewed the people who have bought your art? I would say that most artists I know never have. And why is it important? Well, first off, sometimes you've met your buyers if you're at an art show uh, and you've heard a couple of things that sometimes you never meet them. And sometimes the galleries don't want you to meet them. So that's, that's okay too. But if you have an opportunity to get to know these people, you want to ask them some questions. You want to find out what their feelings were, what, what uh, people say. If you're at an art show and somebody says something about a painting, make a mental note of what they say. Uh, if you interview your buyers, you can ask them, you know, how did the painting make you feel? Uh, what was your first reaction to the painting? Because there's usually a feeling associated with it. Oh, uh, that reminds me of my childhood, and I remember being so happy. You know, I had a rope swing just like that one in the picture. Uh, so it's it's something about feeling. It's a reminder. Did it remind you of anything? Does, is it bringing up any any memories? I um, I bought a painting from Todd Reifers one time. I had uh, I had seen it on uh, his we website, and I, it reminded me of my great grandfather's farm. And so I just, you know, for grands, I showed it to my dad and I said, dad, uh, this painting reminds me of, uh, the farm. He said, Oh yes. Oh, that's beautiful. And he just said, I can't stop looking at it. I love it. So I bought it for him for father's day because it was something that every time he walked by it, it stimulated that feeling and that emotion. All right. Uh, so you want to ask him about, tell me what your reactions were when you first saw this painting. And, and I would encourage you, if you have a relationship with some of your art buyers, and the sooner the better, right? Because once they're used to it, they're not going to be able to say that. But the sooner the better is just, hey, can I give you a quick call and ask you a couple of questions? Or can I ask you a couple of questions now? Don't be annoying, but just ask them, you know, tell me about the first time you saw it. What did it remind you of? Did it make you feel any particular way? Because you were looking for clues. Now, there are four different personality types. All four personality types respond differently to stimuli, and two of the personality types are very uh, outgoing and aggressive, not aggressive, but outgoing and assertive. The other two are very uh, inward turning, and so oftentimes, for instance, you know, people who in certain jobs, oftentimes people like computer programmers or, or accountants or something are less assertive. They're kind of quiet, they're kind of shy, and yet they still have the money to buy, but sometimes they need a little bit of a nudge and you need to help them get in touch with your feelings. If you've ever been to a therapist and they try to help you get in touch with their feelings, because sometimes you're not and it's important. And if they get in touch with their feelings about it, they're more likely to be a buyer. Understanding buyers will help you appeal to new buyers. This will help you write copy that uh, can be your headlines. I was reading a book yesterday by David Ogilvy, who's one of the greats in advertising. And he says that 80% of all products are sold because of a headline, 80%. That, and these days it's really 80% based on a subject line. If you can't get them to open the email, you can never get them to your headline. Your headline is what's gonna get them to read the email. If they read the email, then you know maybe they will go further and, uh, and, and buy something, but uh, you've got to understand the things that are going to appeal to new buyers. Language used in your marketing is really important when you're, you know, when you're approaching how you relate to what people's feelings are. Now, these are the things that people want. Now, not all people want these things, but uh, these are the primary things that people are looking for that are clues for marketing. Some people want money. Some people want respect. Some people want security or sex appeal or love or to be better than others. 
status, you know, one upsmanship is important to some people. Entitlement, I want to feel entitled. I want to feel special. I want to be, I got respect in there already. And security, I forgot, I repeated those. Hope and your desires fulfilled. And sometimes there's secret desires, right? That they would never share with anybody. They want their dreams to come true, to be realized. They want a better future. They want to be the cool kids, you know, like the people who are coming to Plain Air Live. They're the cool kids. And so this is what you want to do and, and, and use that in your marketing to some extent and look for triggers that appeal to the people, the type of people who are more likely to buy your paintings. For instance, if you're appealing to baby boomers, by the way, baby boomers have all the money. A lot of people want to market to the millennials, but the millennials don't have as much money. So uh, it's like 60 or 70 percent of all available spending in America is baby boomers. And so uh, if you're if you're a millennial, millennial yourself, you're going to want to try to sell to millennials. But the reality is, if you can sell to people who have money, you're going to have better results. Remember what I say, stand in the river where the money is flowing. And so um, look for things that are important to your buyers. If you find, for instance, let's say you're going to the Coeur d'Alene Art Auction and you know that all the buyers in that room want to own uh, a George Carlson painting, a Scott Christensen painting, a, a Jeremy Lipking painting, uh, they want to own them. Why? Because they're the best. The people who go to these auctions are typically people who can afford the best to buy the best. They want to be sometimes, not always, sometimes they want to be seen as the one who got the best. They want to be known as the collector who has the best of the best. And so in, uh, entitlement or uh, being better than others or something like that is important. So how would you talk to those people? You know, if you were Scott Christensen and you were advertising, maybe you have a quote from some prominent collector who says, I wanted the best of the best. That's why I got a Scott Christensen painting. Scott Christensen, by the way, is going to be in plenty of life. All right. So, but not everybody wants the same thing. So don't mix this up. There's a lot of different things that different people want. We all want to feel important. Everybody on earth wants to feel important. Now, this is uh, from Maslow, and this is called the hierarchy of needs. And it starts at the bottom pyramid, psychological needs. We all, at the very base of all of our needs, we need air, water, food, shelter, sleep, clothing, and we need to reproduce. Uh, so those are psychological needs. No other needs can be met until those needs are met. I mean, right now, if somebody can't pay their, pay their bills and get water or get food, they're not likely to be thinking about buying a painting. So all psychological needs have to be met. Next beyond that is security and safety, right? If somebody's just lost their job, they don't have the money, you know, the resources, if their health is bad, uh, they uh, are, they're living in a riot zone and the, the, uh, or, uh, the, you know, the thing that is most likely to make them happy is to figure out how to, how to move. They're not thinking about buying paintings right now, right? So there's safety needs. Uh, there's love and belonging needs. This is when we start getting into the, the areas that, uh, that, that this will help people. You know, they want friendships. They want to be intimate with people. They want family. They want to be connected. You know, the, the idea of being connected at Plein Air Live, for instance, is the idea that you're going to be like the Plein Air Convention, meeting other people and connecting with those people. That's, that's friendship. That's intimacy. That's love and belonging. And then it goes to, to esteem. You know, am I getting respect, self-esteem, status recognition? Am I strong? Do I have freedom? You know, a lot of us, I'm self-employed because I want freedom, right? I can't work for anybody else because I want to be able to do what I want to do when I want to do it. And then uh, self-actualization is the desire to be the most that you can be. That's why I'm always talking about if you want to really, really be happy, just constantly be studying, learning, growing, taking courses, watching videos, reading books, things like that, because these things make you more of what you want to be. So all of this kind of ties into the whole idea of uh, marketing your art and the things that people want. Art is not a product. Remember that it's not a product. Art provides feelings and dreams and status. 
So you're not selling a product, you're selling feelings and dreams and status. People never buy products, they buy concepts, they buy solutions, they buy fulfillment of desires. That might be status, it might be something else, they're buying a better future. So keep that in mind. Understand that the mind of the art buyer is where all the gold is. If you understand the mind of the art buyer, everything will resonate much better. And it may just be a matter of one or two things that you say when you're meeting with them in person, or if you're a gallery, two, one or two things that you say that will stimulate their thought to uh, going towards buying the painting. You know, I was, I was in Silicon Valley. I started a, 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 a early stage internet radio, which is kind of like what Spotify is now. And I, I was me meeting with venture capital people. And they, uh, they hired a specialist to teach me how to tell stories in presentations. And they said something to me that I'll never forget that I thought was really interesting. They said, they're, you know, yes, they're interested in investing. They're interested in making money. But you know what they want most? They want a story. They want to be able to sell, to say at a cocktail party, I was an investor in YouTube or I was an investor in Google. Uh, there's a guy that I met recently who uh, he said, I'm on the board of um, Uber. And those are status things, you know, and, and people love to be able to tell stories. And well, what are the stories that art buyers tell? Um, you know, somebody says, oh, I see you're interested in art. What's in your collection? Well, do you know Clyde Aspivig or Scott Christensen? Or do you know Catherine Statz or Jill Carver or Kevin McPherson? You know, these are status names in the art industry. And these are uh, people that people want. They want them because of the quality of their art. They want them because of the way the art makes them feel. But if it comes down to two paintings that are equally priced and one of them gives them all the things they want, a beautiful painting and a good feeling, and, and the other one gives them all of those things plus some status, typically they'll pick the status, right? Because it's nice to be able to say, hey, I own a David LaFell painting or a Sherry Christensen drawing or you know whatever. So understand the mind of the art buyer and you'll sell more art than ever. So anyway, that is understanding the mind of the art, art buyer. And uh, we'll see if we can get out of this. Uh, because once again, I have... Once again, I have a frozen computer. Well, I don't know what's going to happen here. Let's see if I can get out of here. All right. I think I am back. <laughs> you know, you, you think about computer freezing, that's a pretty small problem. I want to remind you of a couple of things. First off, make comments today. Uh, your comments, uh, and I'll get to the comments here in a second, uh, your comments will help you win prizes. Uh, secondly, I want to thank some very special people. I want to thank uh, Michael Harding Paints. They're a gold sponsor uh, for the Plein Air Live. I, I should have mentioned the platinum sponsors first. I meant to hit that button. Thank you to, to Kyle at Royal Talons and to Rosemary and crew at Laguna Plein Air Painters and to Pierre at Savoir Fair. These people are, you know, they're stepping up. They know you need something to do. They're stepping up to support it. We need to support them. They, like all of us, have had a, a last two or three bad couple of months, I'm sure. So if you can buy some of their product, we're going to put out a PDF. If you're going to Plein Air Live, you're going to get a PDF program, a souvenir program, just like you would get at the convention. We're going to put in it the palettes, the colors, uh, the materials from all the artists. That alone is gold. I mean, to be able to know all the artists and the brands. Uh, and so you'll be able to go on there and you're watching Scott Christensen paint. You're going to know what colors he has, what brand he uses. Uh, and I think we're making those interactive links. And so you could probably go right to them and, and maybe even buy them. I'm not sure about that. Uh, so the platinum sponsors are, are uh, Royal Talons, Laguna, Planner Painters, and Savoie Fair. Also, uh, Michael Harding Paints is the gold sponsor of Michael Harding from England. Uh, silver sponsors are Multimedia Art Board. I told you about that yesterday. Very thin and light, great for travel. The people at Golden who make open acrylics, they make William Burke's paint, Williamsburg paint and golden acrylics and uh, really great people, by the way. Mark Golden is a, is a sweetheart of a guy. 
And then Ticonderoga uh, Dixon, Ticonderoga Dixon, they have my Mary paints and pencils and a lot of cool stuff. And then Princeton Brushes. So they are the silver sponsors. We also have a lot of organizations who have climbed on board and are helping out uh, that want to see this take place because we've needed this and we're all going to need be be glad because you know the plein air convention doesn't take place for you know till may in denver next year so you need something in between this is uh, american impressionist society american women artists california art club no apps national oil and acrylic painter society plein air painters of colorado plein air painters of new mexico if you want to get your group invited just message me and we'll see about getting you in, in, involved as well and uh, so reminder today oops that's not today <laughs> Uh, turn that off. Turn that off. Okay. Reminder today that, I, that uh, we've got Jeff Legg today at three o'clock uh, at Streamline Art Video. Uh, get signed up for Plein Air Live because you want to make sure that you get in there because of the $100 price increase that happens tomorrow at midnight tomorrow, uh, California time or, or West Coast time. So get your, uh, your tickets done. And okay, what am I giving away today? I am giving away uh, my book, Make More Money Selling Your Art. And uh, that is a Amazon bestseller. I'm pretty proud of that. That's pretty cool for me. And also giving away a digital subscription to Plein Air Magazine, a reminder that Plein Air Magazine is the uh, number one selling art magazine at Barnes, o Barnes & Noble nationally. So we're pretty proud of that. And the digital issue always has 30% more content. So that's what I've got for you guys today. So I'm going to turn off this, this logo, come over and say hello in the comments. And uh, yeah, Ken says, the lake is calling, Eric. In other words, shut up, get out of here. Well, I get it. Uh, so uh, thank you for watching today. Thanks to all the sponsors. Uh, Got to watch your podcast later with Charlie Hunter. It's a listen. We listen to my podcast. It's not a watch. Or you can watch it on YouTube, but there's no visuals. Uh, thank you, everyone. Hello from Texas. Love the videos. Wish I could afford Plein Air Live. Thank you. And all the artists who share their talent. Uh, thank you for that. That's from God's Servant. I don't know the name, but um, we, we understand. We don't want to take money out of your pocket. You know, if, if you are in a situation where you just simply can't afford to go, um, one option is to try the beginner's day. You will get a lot out of that beginner's day. And that's, that's 99 bucks. Uh, we have priced this at about a 10th of what you would spend. If you were going to the plein air convention, you could spend three grand. So it's about two ninety nine to attend. And it is 40 hours of content. You could easily spend three, $4,000 on that much for videos and other things. We don't want to take food off the table. If it's a stretch, it might be worth doing because if it's a stretch, what it's going to do is to stretch your mind and make you a better painter. That's the goal of all of this, make you a better painter and connect. If you can't, we understand. And there will be a time you can follow the marketing advice, listen to uh, your goals, follow your goals, and that'll make a big difference. Uh, Carolyn says she signed up. Thank you, Carolyn. Uh, Paul says hello and thank you. Uh, enjoy the Adirondacks. Yeah, so like 90 degrees here today. I need to go jump in the lake. I have no air conditioning up here and I've got windows and I, uh, Lori bought me a fan that I'm going to put in the, in the back window. So there'll be a fan in there tomorrow. So, uh, Joanne says, uh, Royal Talons is the best. Absolutely. Charlie. Uh, thank you for that. I think they both use Royal Talons. Charlie uses Cobra paint, uh, which is the, uh, water mixable oil that Royal Talon sells. Um, so anyway, thank you so much for everyone watching and I will say goodbye now and have a terrific day. Remember to get into the mind of your prospects. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Flint Air Magazine and Fine Art Connoisseur. I will see you at noon tomorrow. Remember today at 3 p.m., Jeff Legg. You don't want to miss that. Jeff is a really great guy too, a good painter. Bye.